Okay, uh, so I'd like to uh, welcome you all to uh, New York University. Uh, glad to have all of you in here. It's good to get a, a packed room. Uh, we're going to be talking about Africa today. We're going to be talking about tourism today. We're going to be talking about the economy of Africa as well. We have a spectacular uh, lineup of individuals who are going to um, have a roundtable discussion. Africa these days, as you know, is doing extremely well. Often you hear stories of Africans lining up for visas, trying to leave Africa. The other day I was reading the newspaper and I saw indeed a line of people looking for visas, trying to leave the country. And the country in question was actually Portugal. And a lot of the young people of Portugal are trying to go to Angola, which as you know is booming with oil, whereas Europe right now is not doing as well. Some Kenyan friends of mine who are all sort of talking about the economic crisis in Europe, and they actually volunteered. We Kenyans, he said, have a lot of experience with structural adjustments. Maybe we can give some help to Spain. <laughs> so um, Africa is doing very well. A lot of the business people, they look at the growth rates in Africa, they realize 14%, 15%, 9%, whereas the rates here, one, two, two and a half. So um, Africa is doing really well. Today, we're going to be having a, a lot of discussions, uh, primarily around the topic of tourism, but also over economics. So um, again, let me uh, welcome you all here. As I said, my name is Yao Nyako. I am the director of uh, NYU's Africa House, which is uh, happy to be a host of this event. Uh, we've been doing it, I believe this is the seventh year. Uh, Eddie, am I right? The seventh year we've been doing this. It's always a great joy uh, to host these events, to see all of you, friends, colleagues, students, and faculty. So on that note, I'd like to uh, pass the baton, as it were, uh, to my friend, colleague, uh, Eddie Bergman, who is the executive director of the Africa Travel Association. Uh, among other things, Eddie is a student of NYU, and I think I've known Eddie for so long that I knew you when you were a student here, right? Okay, I think we first met when he was still a student here. That was many years ago uh, on both of our sides. Um, Eddie is also, uh, his family background is from South Africa. He is African. He cares about Africa. Almost everything he does all the time is on Africa. Um, Africa Travel Association, Africa events. He helps with Africa um, dance uh, across the other side of this building. is a big uh, theater. And he and his family have been big sponsors of that. And um, I promise to mention this here as well. I've actually been to South Africa and I've visited part of his extended family with his dad, Stan, who I believe is in the audience over Hi, Stan, okay? And so uh, I think Stan was a little, bit, uh, a little bit worried and nervous when I was coming to see his extended family in South Africa, but it was, it was a good event. So uh, thank you for uh, inviting me to the family. The two of them have been really great with Africa. So uh, even before I call Eddie up, can you give, please give a, a big round of applause to the Bergman family who've been doing so, so many great things for Africa. So on that note, I'd like to call up uh, Eddie Bergman, the Executive Director of the Africa Travel Association. Please, a few words for us. Well, thank you, Yao. Um, this is the, uh, as Yao mentioned, this is the seventh year we're doing this. And uh, after seven years, um, we both have something in common. Uh, both Yao and I are, are starting to get up there, and we're, we're both losing our hair. So. Uh, as we can see. So um, mine is going slowly. So um, Ali uh, Velshi um, uh, uh, has been our, our moderator for the session uh, for the last four years, uh, along with Yao and, uh, and, and, and myself. And unfortunately, this year, Ali uh, sends his best regards uh, to everyone. And, um, and as this is an election year uh, in the US, uh, he's been quite, quite busy covering um, uh, those stories. Uh, but I uh, want to thank Yao and thank Africa House for doing this once again. And uh, of course, we have many uh, many in the room from the industry, from the, uh, from the travel, uh, uh, from the private sector, uh, from 
the airline sector. Uh, we also have many students here at NYU. Uh, I happen to teach here at uh, uh, the Tisch Center, which is the Center for Hospitality and Tourism, this, uh, the school that I graduated from and have been teaching for the last year. And um, many of the students are here, both graduate and undergraduate, and would like to thank you for coming. And, uh, and certainly, uh, many of the students are doing some amazing things in the industry. Uh, many are here on government scholarships, studying tourism, and uh, will be going back to their respective countries. And, uh, and uh, we just want to thank everyone for coming out. Uh, and uh, particular thank Yao and thank Africa House. And uh, Yao is an amazing advocate here on campus for, uh, for, for anything to do with Africa. And Africa House is, um, is really developing really nicely. And I think this, is, this year, Africa House actually has a house. And um, uh, we'll be having our board me uh, meeting there for ATA um, uh, tomorrow. And would like to congratulate Yao and Africa House on, 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 on having a house. So uh, thank you. <laughs> it's not, it's not easy to get, uh, get a piece of real estate in New York, so it's, yep. uh, it certainly shows a lot uh, about the developments uh, uh, that, and the progress that have been made. Honorable ministers, distinguished guests, uh, ATA board members, uh, media, uh, NYU faculty, students, friends, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the seventh annual presidential forum. Um, this year, uh, we're proud to say that after seven years, uh, this is becoming a fixed feature in New York, uh, which we do each year during uh, the UN General Assembly week. Uh, and with support of many of our friends and, and sponsors, and uh, over the last seven years, we've had over 15 countries uh, represented and participate in the event since 2006. Uh, we've uh, created a brand and a tradition that is uh, recognizable and hopefully here to stay for many years to come. Uh, today in the room, we have an impressive group of participants, and of course on the stage, a most impressive group of of, uh, of dignitaries, and um, we're most honored to have um, uh, ministers of foreign affairs, tourism ministers, uh, chief secretaries, ambassadors, senior government leaders, and uh, this is, of course, uh, shows that uh, this is the time for Africa tourism. Um, please allow me to welcome our special guest today. Uh, we start by welcoming uh, the president of ATA, uh, uh, who's the honorable minister of tourism and hospitality industry of the Republic of Zimbabwe and president of the Africa Travel Association, Honorable Walter Mzembe. Uh, thank you so much, Minister. Uh, we welcome uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Namibia, uh, Honorable uh, Otuni Njoma. We welcome you. Thank you, sir. Uh, we welcome uh, the immediate past president of ATA and the Honorable Minister of Tourism and Culture of the Republic of the Gambia, Honorable Fatou Mas Jobinjai. Uh, we also welcome the Honorable Minister of Tourism and Art of the Republic of Zambia, uh, Honorable uh, Sylvia Masebu. Uh, we welcome uh, back to NYU, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, in his capacity now as Chief Secretary of the United Republic of Tanzania, Ambassador Mbeni Safui, who's been on this stage many times before. Uh, we're um, most pleased to have with us, uh, representing the African Union uh, Commission, Ambassador uh, Amina Ali, a very good friend. Uh, this year, we're, we're, we're very pleased to welcome for the first time uh, to this forum um, a senior uh, um, leader at the African Development Bank, uh, Professor Mathuli Makube, uh, who's the chief uh, economist and vice president of the African Development Bank. Thank you very much. And um, I know that um, we also have um, with us uh, a senior counselor of the United Nations World Tourism Organization and liaison office to the United Nations in New York, uh, um, Sabuland Khan, uh, welcome, Mr. Khan. And I know joining us uh, during the program, uh, we'll, uh, we're expecting Mr. Amir Dasal, uh, who's the chairman of the Global Partnerships Forum and special representative of the Secretary General uh, to be with us. We also welcome uh, uh, and give a warm welcome to, um, uh, to the leaders of, of, of Africa's tourism boards who are with us, uh, who are in the room uh, 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 today. Uh, we welcome um, uh, Mr. Karoka Kaseke, the uh, chief executive of the Zimbabwe Tourism Authority, uh, who's here with a, um, a wonderful team. Uh, Mr. Felix uh, Chalia, the managing director of the Zambia Tourism Board, is with us. Welcome, sir. Um, um, Mr. Um, uh, Alois Nizuki, Managing Director of the Tanzania Tourism Board, who's a great friend of ATA. Uh, as well as uh, Mr. Alan uh, Kajazi, the Director General of, the, uh, of TANAPA, the Tanzania National Parks, uh, who, um, uh, who um, I believe uh, will be, uh, um, be representatives from the, the parks uh, uh, here. 
Uh, we also welcome uh, Mr. Mohammed uh, Hagezi, the director of the Egyptian Tourism Authority here in, uh, here in New York. And I also understand that uh, we have uh, joining us a, a special assistant to the ambassador in Washington on behalf of the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Nigeria. Uh, I'm not sure um, if, um, if she's here yet, but we welcome um, um, on arrival. And also we welcome uh, members, ambassadors um, who are with us, members of the diplomatic court, uh, and of course, we would like to thank uh, once again the sponsors for today's event, of course, our host, uh, NYU's Africa House. And um, uh, 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 this year, uh, we're pleased that uh, two countries, our two tourism boards, have come together to jointly uh, co-sponsor uh, the Zambia National Tourism Board and the Zimbabwe Tourism Authority. And we'd like to thank uh, the vision of this, uh, which really kind of, uh, which we think kind of uh, grew out of a, a wonderful meeting that we had in Zimbabwe in Vic Falls, where we also had the opportunity to uh, to visit the Zambia side, and uh, and it was wonderful collaboration and cooperation, and uh, the two countries are, are joining together to uh, to co-sponsor this event today in the spirit of the upcoming uh, UNWTO uh, uh, a meeting. So we thank we thank Zimbabwe uh, and we thank Zambia. Uh, we also thank the Tanzania Tourist Board and Tanzania National Parks for their support. And from the private sector, uh, we'd like to thank uh, South African Airways, uh, which has uh, uh, been a, an ongoing uh, partner and supporter of this forum. And uh, we'll hear a little bit later from uh, Mr. Greg Truman. And we welcome Greg, uh, who's here, too. Um, we, as we look around the room today, we can see many new friends, uh, many of our longtime members. And of course, we welcome the members of the ATA Board of Directors who are uh, who work very hard uh, in uh, their respective roles within the Africa tourism industry, contributing their time and resources to advance the mission of ATA. And I'd like to ask the, the members of the board, as well as uh, we have our, our chapter presidents who are with us, to, just to stand for a moment to be recognized, uh, those who are in the room. I see Mr. Bob Bruner, Gainel Henderson, Doris Wooten, uh, uh, Mr. Greg Truman, Andrea Papito, Robert Washington, and Dr. Johannes uh, Zellick. Thank you very much uh, for, for, your, for being with us. Um, on, the, um, um, on the line of a of, of, of very important um, um, uh, um, um, dignitaries who are with us today, uh, we also have with us uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Musa Hassan Musa, uh, who's a member of parliament from Zanzibar. Uh, the beautiful island of Zanzibar. Uh, we welcome you, Mr. Mr. Thank you very much for, for being with us. And I also uh, believe, as I mentioned, we have several ambassadors who are with us uh, and, uh, from, the, from the representing the, the, the countries that are, uh, that are participating today. I think we have our ambassador from, uh, uh, from Tanzania uh, who's with us. Uh, 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 Madam Ambassador, welcome. And, and I would uh, believe that we have an ambassador from, uh, from, uh, from Namib Namibia, if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, ambassador uh, or the embassy, uh, we welcome. Um, and um, I hope I'm not. This is the danger of doing this because what happens is <laughs> you know you've uh, you know you've recognized everyone, but uh, but you feel that there's always one person that you've messed up. And I apologize. Um, but yeah, we'll throughout the the program we'll, we'll come back and recognize. We have so many amazing leaders from the continent here uh, and from the industry. So honorable members, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'd like to take a moment to uh, to speak with you. Um, uh, about ATA and our presidential forum on tourism and the year ahead. To begin, for the last 37 years, ATA has aimed to promote tourism to Africa and strengthen intra-Africa travel. We do this uh, working with our membership from both public and private sector, uh, who are all committed to a shared mission of promoting destination Africa. Uh, we do this in the spirit of the, the wonderful um, uh, vision and work uh, of the African Union Commission, with whom we've signed uh, memorandum of Understanding and our 35th Annual Congress in the Gambia in May 2010. And the MOU fosters a partnership that develops sustainable tourism across Africa and broadens the scope of public-private partnerships for tourism across a wide array of sectors. While we have an international reach, we're here uh, uh, headquartered in New York, so in many ways we serve as a bridge between the North American uh, market and Africa, aiming to increase tourism arrivals and investments on both sides of the Atlantic. Uh, we also aim to bring Destination Africa to as many global travel markets as possible. To achieve our mission, we organize travel industry events in uh, Africa and as well as North America uh, with the tourism stakeholders. This includes our annual Congress. As I mentioned, our 37th annual Congress was held in uh, Vic Falls in Zimbabwe in May, uh, which was a wonderful event where uh, close to 500 delegates, uh, about 200 international delegates, uh, came together to, uh, to discuss and to 
network on major issues that are affecting the African uh, continent. And we'll hear about um, some of the outcomes of that event today. Our annual Congress next year in 2013 uh, is scheduled to be uh, hosted by the government of Cameroon and will take place in Cameroon in uh, 2013. We also have our, uh, in addition to this presidential forum in New York, we do an annual US Africa Tourism Seminar in Washington, DC, uh, where um, we um, are scheduled to have that event on March 8th, 2013, and we look forward to, uh, to seeing everyone joining us uh, in, in, in our nation's capital. In addition, we organize promotional travel roadshows for African destinations and partner with various uh, trade shows and events throughout the year uh, to promote our members as well as Destination Africa. Uh, we are also very pleased to partner with various uh, organizations from the travel industry uh, that represents various, uh, various sectors. Uh, we have a, a strong partnership with the Caribbean Tourism Organization. Uh, we've worked with the Pacific Asia Travel Association. And in the U.S., uh, we have a, a very uh, strategic and strong partnership with the National Tour Association. Uh, and I believe uh, Mr. Steve Richter is here uh, representing uh, the NTA. And we thank you, uh, Steve, and your team for, for that wonderful partnership. And Finally, to expand our reach, we organize a number of special initiatives. We have our Young Professionals Program, and thanks to the efforts uh, this year and uh, of our co-chairs, uh, Andrea Papito and Robert Washington, uh, who's did before this year, uh, the Young Professionals Forum uh, are organizing a, a seminar at 2 p.m. in this building in room 802, and we encourage everyone uh, who's able to stay to participate in that, uh, and it should be a great event, and uh, we thank the Young Professionals Program for all that they've, they've done to advance the mission of tourism uh, we also have a special initiative working uh, called the ATA Diaspora Initiative, aiming to engage the African diaspora in Africa's tourism industry. Now we'll turn to today's event. Uh, we launched this forum in 2006, and uh, the aim was to continue to bring tourism uh, leaders from African governments as, uh, together to advocate for tourism as a vital part of nations' foreign policy and encourage uh, nations to, uh, as well as the international community to allocate resources and attention to the tourism industry. This raises the inevitable question, uh, why tourism? Uh, tourism is largely about perception, and as we know, uh, oftentimes perception is reality. And of course, Africa faces that perhaps more than any other uh, uh, continent um, in, uh, in the world. So how do we work on, uh, on improving the perception? Uh, that's really where tourism comes into play. So in the short term, by traveling to any one of uh, the countries represented here today, by staying in a hotel, eating in a restaurant, shopping for art, uh, purchasing gifts, visiting museums, experiencing um, one of the country's offerings like a safari, culinary tourism, cultural tourism, adventure travel, we are making a direct investment in the local economies. In the medium and long term, tourism provides opportunities for job creation, uh, earnings, investment, trade, and entrepreneurship. Tourism also creates opportunities for peace, cultural exchange, and global understanding. While governments play a leading role in advocating tourism, this must be done in partnership with the private sector, and tourism provides this opportunity for both the public and private sectors to flourish in free and competitive markets. In addition, public-private partnerships are fundamental to making a difference in the tourism industry, especially since tourism is one of the only export industries, if not the only export industry, that is in a position to benefit the economy, environment, and the people mutually without compromising uh, one or the other, which is the theme of today's event. And finally, over the next 12 months, we'll continue to work with the membership uh, of the association to do all we can to support and advance uh, the mission of adv the advancement of tourism to Africa. Tourism cannot be addressed solely from a national perspective and cannot be addressed solely from a regional perspective. It must be addressed across sectors and across borders. And that's where each and every one of us here today has a critical role to play. So we turn to our strategic partners, our members, and to our program participants, and ask that we all work together to promote uh, tourism and build a strong industry uh, in, in Africa. I'd also like to uh, take the opportunity of also, I understand that we have with us today uh, the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Tourism and Hospitality, uh, Ms. Uh, Margaret uh, uh, Segari, who's with us, uh, I believe from, um, um, from Zimbabwe, from Zimbabwe. Okay, great, thank you so much. Uh, uh, um, um, and, I, we have, uh, and speaking on that, uh, the, uh, as I mentioned, Zimbabwe currently holds the, the presidency of, um, of ATA, and there's a, there's a very uh, significant delegation that's come over from Zimbabwe, and, um, and I think that speaks real, uh, real um, um, 
volume with respect to the commitment that Zimbabwe has to, uh, to promote tourism to this market. We'll hear shortly from the Honorable Minister of Tourism, and we thank the, the entire delegation. And of course, when you have with us in the room, we have the Honorable Minister, the Permanent Secretary, the CEO of the, of the Tourism Authority, as well as a, a delegation. Uh, I think that speaks a lot about the seriousness that Zimbabwe places on tourism, and particular, uh, this market in, in the U.S. So at this point, um, I'd like to uh, thank everyone and uh, invite Yao uh, back to, uh, to, uh, to do what he does. Great. Okay. <laughs> Moderate. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, great job. Uh, thanks so much, Eddie. All right, so we're moving uh, right through the program. Every now and then I say, Contrary to the views of, I think it was a representative in the South who once called Africa a country. Um, Africa is not a country, of course, but what if it was a country? It would be great. Uh, when it comes to tourism, um, I remember uh, a few months ago, I went to my uh, eight-year-old daughter's uh, public school, and I had to give a lecture about Africa. And I remember telling the classroom that there are parts of Africa which are cold, parts of Africa which are dry, parts of Africa which have extreme rainforests, parts of Africa so stunningly beautiful with mountains and gorges, parts of Africa where the water goes off a cliff so loud, it's like guns or cannons roaring. That's Africa. So sometimes I say maybe Africa should be a country, right? It would be a beautiful country. Maybe uh, as tourists are going to Africa, they can hop from one place to the other place freely uh, without hindrance. Africa has something called the African Union. It is sort of our, represent, our representative body. Um, and we have here in the United States representing the African Union Commission, Her Excellency Amina Ali, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary, African Union Ambassador to the United States, and she is going to tell us everything the African Union is going to do to make us look and feel like a country. So on that note, uh, Madame Amina, I'll call you up here for, um, I'm told here to uh, give you only five minutes, okay, so that the program can go along, okay? So five minutes, tell us everything about all the 54 countries in Africa, okay? All yours. <laughs> no fair. <laughs> I think it is too restrictive, <laughs> but I'll try my level best. <laughs> so, uh, Honorable Chair, Minister from Zimbabwe, Honorable Ministers, Chief Secretary, Excellencies, Member of Parliament, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I would like to take this opportunity, first of all, to express my profound appreciation for yet another opportunity on behalf of my commissioner to address this August gathering. My commissioner asked me to convey her greetings and uh, message of support of this meeting today. She had wished to be with us today, but due to an unavailable commitment, she could not be here with us. She wishes successful deliberations. Happy World Tourism Day. I'm honored to address this special session today with the purpose of uh, promoting the tourism in Africa. This year is very important because it's geared toward creating awareness among the international community of the importance of tourism and its social, cultural, political, and economic value. I would like to call the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon when he said one of the world's largest economic sectors, tourism is especially well placed to promote environmental sustainability, green growth, and our struggle against climate change through its relationship with energy, especially renewable energy. Sustainable energy will allow tourism to continue to expand while mitigating its impact on the environment. Ladies and gentlemen, with its huge diversity and rich supply of natural resources, wealth in wildlife and cultural heritage, Africa is one of the main destinations 
for international tourism in the world. I'll give you some of the example. Serengeti in Tanzania and uh, Masai Mara in Kenya, Victoria Falls, Zambia and Zimbabwe, uh, one of the greatest natural wonders of the world, Pyramid of Giza and Egypt, Jena in Mali is one of the sub-Saharan Africa's oldest cities. Its great mosque is considered by many architects to be the greatest achievement of the sudano sahelian architectural style. The natural beauty of Cape Town in South Africa makes it one of the most attractive cities in the world. The imperial city of Marrakesh, Morocco, the Omo River region of southwestern Ethiopia is a fascinating destination. Also mountain gorillas that inhabit an extinct volcanic region called the Virunga Range along the borders of Rwanda, Uganda, and the DRC in East Africa. Africa highest peak, Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, and the very famous Spice Island of Zanzibar, and many more. However, the tourism industry continues to be confronted with insurmountable challenges in its development key, in its development. Key issues to be addressed today is commercial viability, product quality and price, marketing is central to the success of any tourism strategy. Suitable infrastructure including hotels, transportation, and new technology for communication. This area is very essential for the efficient tourism sector delivery to satisfy the tourist. The African Union Commission and NEPAD, with partnership with ADB, and I would like to recognize the Vice President of ADB, for the good work they are working to partner with African Union and ECA to make sure that Africa, within the shortest period, will be able to address our challenges. We have launched PIDA as a comprehensive infrastructure development program to be able to accelerate development in Africa. Tourism development calls for an integrated approach, and this is, a Madam, Madam a Commissioner would like to emphasize, between African institutions. African Union Commission, Regional Economic Commission, ADB, ECA, and our own national governments to revamp the African tourism policy that would clearly address issues on capacity building and training, and training in the hospital industry. Marketing and promotion for Africa is a growing, is a growing destination. Transport communication to connect tourism destination within the continent and the tourism and tourists from outside Africa. In the spirit of the MOU signed between the African Union Commission and African Tourism Association as partners in development of tourism industry in Africa, I hope today's annual presidential forum will come out with recommendation as a roadmap for development of this sector. In concluding, I, would like, I want to take a moment to congratulate ATA for their wonderful work and commitment that they've expressed to continuously posting Africa in the world tourism map. We'll continue to support ATA so as to contribute greatly in su supporting member states to realize their national economic potential, uh, their, their, their potential, tourism potential, and their national economic development. I wish success for this year annual presidential forum on tourism. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we thank the uh, Madam Ambassador, Commissioner. Uh, she has to leave for another meeting, so uh, thank you so much for coming. Um, moving right along, we next have a welcome by the President of the African Travel Association, Honorable Walter Nzembi, Minister of Tourism and Hospitality Industry, Minister of Tourism and Hospitality Industry in the Republic of Zimbabwe. And so uh, please uh, invite him up here. And again, I was told only five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's five minutes plus uh, three, because the lady did uh, a bit just under two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Honorable ministers here present, excellencies, ambassadors of different uh, countries, members of the Africa Travel Association, Board of Directors, Executive Director, 
of the Africa Travel Association. Heads of tourism boards here present, captains of the travel and tourism industry, the members of the media, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, let me start by paying tribute first to the past president of the Africa Travel Association, the Honorable Fatou Marsh Jobe Jai. I hope I've gotten it correct. Um, my presidency <laughs> of the Travel Association has obviously been built on the good work that she did during her presidency. And I just want us to acknowledge that before I carry on with my remarks. She did a fantastic job, and I think we are going to have a fairly easy ride on the back of a very good work. Let me start by acknowledging that tourism is becoming an increasingly important global sector, uh, and it's a foregone conclusion in any of our analysis that in the world's economy and its politics, tourism uh, is going to occupy center stage. As a continent, Africa faces two critical, indisputable facts or challenges that it must recognize urgently and address if as Africa's contemporary travel and tourism leadership we are going to make the difference that we need to make. The first is the fact that only four to five percent uh, is our contribution to the total tourism e economy of the globe, which I believe uh, is the ranges from direct income of 1.3 trillion to 6 trillion gross domestic uh, product impact. So we have to really quickly address this. I don't intend to uh, give you my uh, policy statement on my presidents, but uh, I've already done that online but I think there are areas that I really need to restate, and one of them is going to be how we are going to increase our contribution to global tourism or to the global tourism economy going forward. The second that is that in spite of the, that low contribution to global tourism, the nature of tourism is such that the industry is one that holds the maximum capacity to advance the continent from where it sits today to becoming the world's promising continent of the future. It is my hope that my tenure as president will address the critical success factors that will enable Africa to indeed become the continent of the future. And I'll briefly state what these factors are. The first one, obviously, is the authoring of a common African agenda. Uh, that is super critical, and I'm happy that before me uh, spoke the lady from the African uh, Union Commission. Uh, we need to sponsor our agenda, and I'm hoping that uh, as we advance towards the UNWTO General Assembly next year, we are able to substantively uh, look at this subject matter of what is going to be our agenda. But to me, it is underpinned by the two areas that really measure tourism today. It's arrivals and uh, economic contribution in terms of uh, where we stand today, the 1.3 trillion and the 6 trillion GDP impact. The second issue will be to develop Brand Africa. Uh, we need to work very seriously on developing Brand Africa. Before I came here, and in the last three days that I've been here, um, a lot of uh, news has been taking place around Africa. And uh, I'm sure you would agree with me that uh, global mainstream media uh, is a certain standard now, a uh, template on what it captures on, on Africa. And these are issues that we need to quickly uh, address. And it's in the areas of political instability, insecurity and strife, uh, disease, famine, uh, street kids and begging, the area of governance, uh, genocide, crime, all these isms that are captured around the African brand. And I would hope that as we go forward as Africa, looking at this agenda that I'm already alluding to, we are able to begin to work on Brand Africa in our individual and collective sense and support policies and activities aimed at winning uh, the propaganda war going forward. And I'm um, imploring Africans here that we need to obviously author a master strategy to deal with this problem at the African Union level. Uh, if the lady was here, I would have really wanted her to take this message as take on value 
at the African Union level. And I, I submit Af that Africa must actually begin to fight images with images so that we, we, we go forward. When one of us is under siege, it is all of us. Because to the unexposed uh, overseas uh, visitor, Africa may continue to remain the single dark continent. Uh, you were talking about Africa being the, 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 the country. It can remain the single dark country that it is uh, being uh, sold as on global mainstream media. So it is our responsibility to almost begin immediately to, to respond to this, uh, this brand attacks and continue to inspire a systematic uh, approach to how we can overcome negative travel advisories in the first instance, imposed on us as individual member countries and as a perceptional collective. So I'm imploring African governments here and ministers that we have to leverage our membership of various international travel and tourism bodies. The UNWTO, ATAI, a very specific example, WTTC, amongst others, to fight this stigma. So as we sit and discuss, let's be conscious of where we are coming from in terms of uh, uh, our brand image as Africa and how we can overcome that. The third factor that I hope we can begin to look at is the area of accessibility. Tourism is only tourism when people uh, arrive. And uh, I hope we are able to obviously discuss this in order to look at the benefits that are alluded to in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the topic of this gathering. Uh, the area of airline transportation, today 51% of the world's tourism arrivals, they arrive by air. Out of the 980 million arrivals globally, 51% of them arrive by air. What is Africa uh, doing? How are we positioned to receive these, uh, these visitors? The next one, obviously, and I hope I can propose this year, is that as African governments, members of this ATA, we can begin to sponsor, in our minds at least at a visionary level, the idea of an African tourism summit where we can sit and, and discuss. And I hope that we can leverage with this platform to begin to discuss that as well. Uh, another area, of course, is the area of uh, uh, tourism exhibitions and fairs. I know that we respond uh, in our various capacities as countries to international tourism exhibitions, ITB, uh, now in the most recent uh, future, we'll be going to London, uh, to, to WTM, uh, and so forth. When are we going to begin talking about our own African tourism fair, which can rotate from country to country and begin to deal with this mischief of uh, the African brand? Uh, I would like to see, obviously, as we go forward, a, a very integrated approach uh, on marketing. Uh, we are not uh, uh, useful to anybody's uh, tourism destination if we continue to sell ourselves as in single entities. Uh, and I think uh, there's no one who will embark on long haul travel to Africa to experience um, um, tourism just from Zimbabwe alone. And this is why in our part of the world, Zimbabwe and Zambia, we have joined in, uh, hands in this tango to market the Victoria Falls as a single destination, to market Zimbabwe and Zambia as single entities so that we, we, we lead in the front and we walk the talk in positioning certain parts and aspects of Africa as, as one. And finally, um, I would like, obviously, as we go forward, to see a very revolutionary approach to our immigration visa regime as Africans. We can't continue to respect the boundaries that were imposed by us by the Berlin Conference, when the very same people who imposed those boundaries on us have shattered them, they've broken them, they've pulled them down, and um, evolved with a single visa regime that they refer to as Schengen. If you get one, you have access to the entire Europe. But in Africa, we continue to honor the same individual entities in terms of the boundaries uh, that were imposed on us, and it is inhibiting travel. And I would hope that going forward, we understand that tourism is about welcoming people. And the more we make it uh, restrictive and inhibitive for people to come to our countries, the less we get in terms of uh, the contribution that I was talking about. But charity begins at home. In Africa, we must begin to visit each other. We must pull down those barriers and then come out and entice international source markets like this particular one that we call the United States. Let's make it easy for them to come. When they come into Zimbabwe, 
they have come into Africa, they must have safe access and passage to the rest of the African continent. So before I depart from this platform, I just want to register uh, the fact that um, my president, President Gabe, had been invited uh, to this forum um, under the presidential forum um, uh, configuration. And he wished to uh, make his presentation on a subject matter that um, had been advised to him by the Africa Travel Association. And it was on the subject uh, of how uh, the, the importance of tourism to a nation's growth and the need to make it a centerpiece of a nation's foreign policy strategy. And I'm sure you would understand with the, where we are coming from in Zimbabwe, a decade of estrangement and isolation, that this particular subject matter would have been very relevant and is to remain relevant to us as a country. And no wonder why we have this omnipresent presence as a delegation, because we value and we've understood that tourism is the last bridge that you should pull down. Even when nation states are in a state of fallout politically and they are not agreeing, we should not destroy this bridge that we refer to as tourism because it is a people-to-people -people bridge. We must allow our people to walk it back and forth while we try and find each other uh, politically. And this is the essence of the message that he had left with me. And I would hope that you allow me during the proceedings to just read from his message. Uh, it would take five minutes, but I defer to, to, to Eddie and the master of ceremony to, to read his message, because I think it is an important message from coming from a country that has experienced it all in the last decade in terms of uh, isolation and estrangement and how we value and see tourism as being that bridge that should continue to link us to the beautiful people of the world. So without further ado, and until I'm advised, and uh, I know that I can abuse my position as president, but this is a democracy. <laughs> I would hope that uh, uh, I, I can be allowed a little later into the program to read the bottom from the president's speech, what he would have wished to share with you on this important subject matter. I thank you. Okay, so we uh, thank the Honorable Minister for all his uh, great words. I, I was particularly struck when he talk, spoke so eloquently about African Union and having Africa as one country, as I said before, uh, partnerships um, all across. Um, I was born and raised in Ghana. Uh, Ghana is next door to Cote d'Ivoire, uh, half my family, maybe now a quarter of my family is actually in Cote d'Ivoire, the other part is in Ghana. Uh, there used to be a time uh, not too long ago when you make a phone call from Accra in Ghana to Abidjan. I kid you not, the phone call goes from Accra to London, London to Paris, Paris back to Abidjan, okay? Um, those of you who are in the airline industry, hopefully when we want to travel from Accra to Abidjan, you won't force us to go the same way, okay? You'll give us some direct flights. We don't have to go to Europe before you come back to Africa. So. Um, Thank you, Honorable Minister, for saying that. And um, next, I would like to uh, invite up for a welcome by the co-sponsor, Honorable Sylvia Masebo, Minister of Tourism and Art, Republic of Zambia. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much, Master of Ceremony, and good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Minister of Tourism and Hospitality Industry of the Republic of Zambia and uh, Zimbabwe and President of the Travel, Africa Travel Association, uh, Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Namibia, Minister of Tourism and Culture of the Republic of Gambia, um, Ambassador Sefu, Chief Secretary of the United Republic of Tanzania, Professor Nchubi, Chief Economist and Vice President of the African Development Bank, and uh, Mr. Khan, Senior Counselor of the UNWTO Liaison Office to the United Nations in New York, members of the African uh, Tourism Association, 
May I simply say, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I will speak on the co-hosting of the 20th UN General Assembly, which will be taking place in August uh, in Zimbabwe and Zambia. As you will really appreciate, Zambia and Zimbabwe have very strong political and economic relations dating back to the period of the Federation of Northern and Southern Rhodesia. When Zambia got her independence in 1964, she offered her her support, both socially and materially, for the independence of Southern Rhodesia, now which is called Zimbabwe, after it, of course, attained its her independence in 1980. It is against this background that the two countries have been working together in all the regional and international fora, such as the SADC, COMESA, African Union, the United Nations, and other international organization. Recently, the two countries have strengthened further their relations by working closely in the regional tourism organization of Southern Africa, RITOSA, and the United Nations World Tourism Organization, UNWTO. Realizing the need to strengthen relations that exist between Zambia and Zimbabwe, and seeing the opportunity of jointly marketing our shared resource of the mighty Victoria Falls, the two countries worked together in the year 2010 to bid to co-host the 20th session of the UNWTO General Assembly in August 2013. Our vision when we initiated the bid was to have a uni uniquely African General Assembly. This got full support from SADC, Rotesa member states, and subsequently from the African continent through the UNWTO Regional Commission for Africa. On the sidelines of the 2012 Zimbabwe International Trade Fair, Zambia and Zimbabwe signed the bilateral MOU on tourism cooperation, which was witnessed by their excellencies, the President of Zimbabwe, Mr. Uh, Comrade Robert G. Mugabe, and Mr. Michael Chelufia Sata, of this was at, state, at the State House in Harare, Zimbabwe. The signing of the bilateral MOU paved way for the historic signing of the trilateral host agreement between Zambia and Zimbabwe and the UNWTO. The trilateral host agreement was signed by the two heads of state of Zambia and Zimbabwe and the Secretary General of the UNWTO on the 29th of May, 2012 at the Victoria Falls Bridge. The two heads of states were also honored with the UNWTO Golden Book of Tourism, which signifies the country's commitment to the growth and development of sustainable tourism. On the same day, the ministers responsible for tourism signed the bilateral MOU on the co-hosting of the UNWTO General Assembly. When the bid was done by Zambia and Zimbabwe for the UNWTO General Assembly, as the co-host, the countries agreed firstly to share the cost of co-hosting by 50-50. Secondly, we also agreed to jointly implement the framework, which stipulates both national and bilateral implementation structures to spearhead preparations for the successful co-hosting of the General Assembly. The co-hosting of the 20th session of the UNWTO General Assembly was endorsed by the UNWTO Executive Council during the 93rd Executive Council meeting, which was held in Madrid, Spain in June 2012, as an African General Assembly. To this date, we have uh, the following that has been Im implemented in preparation for the co-hosting of the 2013 UNWTO General Assembly. Firstly, we've held seven joint committee meetings between the two countries. We've had uh, two uh, UNWTO inspection teams uh, visiting the hosting countries. We have both uh, started upgrading of infrastructure, including hotels, roads, airports, waterworks, and health facilities. We are also create, we've also created working structures uh, such as safety and security, information and uh, information technology, marketing, promotion and media and publicity. 
We've also tried hard to ensure that the preparations involve the communities and the private sector. I would like on behalf of Zambia and Zimbabwe to assure the international community that the two countries are committed to the co-hosting of the uniquely African General Assembly in August 2013, which will leave a long-time legacy for our two countries. We further wish to reaffirm our general satisfaction on the preparations done so far, and also just to state that we are doubling up our efforts to market and promote the General Assembly. Zambia and Zimbabwe will be failing to recognize the efforts of Honorable Njeo, Gambia's Minister of Tourism and Culture, in contributing to the winning of the bid for the 20th General Assembly. Gambia's efforts were not in vain at all, as the world's focus is now on the two sister countries. To the African Travel Association, would like to request for continued promotion of the Victoria Falls not only as the place for the 20th UNWTO, but as a spectacular tourism destination before and beyond the General Assembly. I'm sure that I will not um, be out of bounds to say that beyond the Victoria Falls, both countries, Zimbabwe and Zambia, have other interesting tourist sites that will be of great interest to you. You may wish to note that Zambia as 40% of the fresh waters in the southern region of Africa are in Zambia. We have more than one Victoria Falls. We have many, many falls, over 70 falls and lakes and rivers. We also, both countries have wildlife. We have over 20 national parks, over 36 game management areas, we have sanctuary beds, we have the rich cultural, diverse rich cultural, and we also have traditional ceremonies. So there's much more to see in both countries beyond the Victoria Falls. But the Victoria Falls is very unique. As you know, it's one of the seven wonders of the world. And uh, both Zambia and Zimbabwe would be very happy to have you come over, not just to be tourists. I think in the process, many of you would wish to invest in both countries as they have great opportunities for investments, especially in the tourism sector, among other sectors, of course. Lastly, let me state that um, Zambia and Zimbabwe appreciates the support that have so far been given in its preparations for the co-hosting of the General Assembly. And I would uh, like to th say that uh, we are willing to get more support from other ATA members in ensuring that we have a memorable African um, General Conference. I thank you for your attention. Okay, so um, moving right along, um, again, um, many of those you're seeing seated here have given up uh, a lot of their time. Many of them have other activities going on, so we really thank them all for um, you know, being able to spend the time with us here. I am going to go a little bit off sequence. Um, I just want to remind those sponsors um, just to get ready. I think we have a couple of awards. Um, please make sure you are seated in the front there. Um, but I'm going a little bit um, out of schedule because uh, we have one of our guests who just got an email um, that he has to be at the UN. Um, something just came up. Um, I, I don't know whether he's going to tell us about it. Um, so I'm going, I'm going a little bit off sequence. Um, and uh, we're going to bring up to speak to us uh, a member of a very important family in Africa. Um, this is from Namibia. And the Nyoma family, as you know, have a deep 
and great history. Um, if it comes to the liberation of South Africa, as you all know, Swapo and Namibia were at the forefront. They paid dearly in terms of lives, in terms of the economies uh, to make all of this happen. Even today, when we're looking for great leaders, great leadership on the continent, especially in the very fragile area around Namibia, Angola, Rwanda, DRC, etc. The family is also extremely important. They have quietly been helping solve problems even before they come onto the radar screen. There's usually this joke about Africa that you know a country is doing well when you don't hear anything about it in the newspaper, right? And so uh, these days it's been a little bit calm in that part of the world, and so we know that things are actually uh, uh, going very, very well. So in any event, the Honorable Utoni Nuyoma has to leave uh, shortly. He is the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Namibia. Uh, we've been strategizing for a long time to bring him here. Uh, he graciously agreed to come here. He'll be here again, hopefully, with uh, the rest of his family. Uh, but as I said, he's been called back to the United Nations, and so uh, please give him and his family a big round of applause as he comes to talk to us for a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Program Director, uh, distinguished panelists, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. At the onset, I wish to express my deep appreciation and profound gratitude to the New York University Africa House and the Africa Travel Association for inviting me to participate in this important discussion. I have been asked to speak about the tourism industry in Namibia and its potential to contribute to economic growth of the country. Uh, as you know, ladies and gentlemen, uh, tourism is, is one of the fastest growing sectors of the Namibian economy. It currently contributes about 16% to the GDP and accounts for 18% of the total employment in the country. Indeed, over the next 10 years, the tourism, uh, tourism sector is forecast to achieve an annual real growth of 7%, with the commensurate growth anticipated also in employment creation. This will take the share of the tourism industry in GDP to 23% by the year 2016, thus making it one of the most important sources of economic growth. Tourism investment, development, and promotion in Namibia is market-driven. To attract investments and successfully market the country, the government has put in place a tourism policy geared towards facilitating the removal of barriers to tourism development, thereby enabling the private sector and the country to, commit, to compete effectively in the global tourism market. We have also adopted a number of programs to maximize the potential of the tourism sector. We are promoting ecotourism and have embraced the concept of community-based natural resource management whereby rights over wildlife are devolved to local communities to make wildlife conservancies. These conservancies have proved to be beneficial to the communities as they generate substantial incomes and thus alleviate poverty in rural areas. Namibia has the potential to develop as a world-leading uh, tourism destination. We offer a range of unique and exciting natural and cultural wonders, spectacular landscapes, fascinating wildlife, amazing dunes, cultural diversity, and excellent infrastructure. In no other African country is it possible to be drawn so quickly and the excellent infrastructure within the countries 
allows self-drive and escorted tourist hassle-free travels, whether by camper van, coach, car, or aeroplane, to see it all and to meet the inhabitants. The two deserts in the country displays a variety of amazing ecological system in life form, and the ice breeze along the Atlantic coastline, which stresses over 1,500 kilometers along the west coast. The thermal fountains, waterfalls, all invite the visitor to experience an unforgettable adventure. A visit to the Etosha National Park, the gem of game viewing in northern Namibia, should definitely not be missed to come face to face with elephants, black and white rhino, giraffe, lion, heads of zebra, and antelopes in the African wilderness. The Nam Namib Nokluf part in the south of the country promises a delight for scenes. Here, contrasts are pulled to the forefront from the towering red dunes to the rock deep canyons and mountains. In eastern Namibia, you will be greeted by the vast plains of the Kalahari Desert, which forms the largest continuous stretch of sand on earth. The landscape of the red dunes and yellow savanna is home to many animals, such as the oryx, springbok, antelope, the beetled fox, and ostrich. And in the northeastern area of Namibia, a lush, fertile wilderness of, of ravine forest, flat plain swamps, and open woodland felt with wildlife awaits you. In addition to these national wonders, international arrivals trends indicate growth in the multi-destination travel within Southern Africa by high long spending whole travelers. Such visitors like to combine highlights of the region into one itinerary. Namibia tourism policy recognizes these facts and support a number of important cross-border parks between Namibia and her neighboring countries. We in Namibia fully recognize that the human factor is of prime importance in tourism. We therefore strive to ensure that the service we provide to our, our visiting guest is of a standard that meets international requirements. For we are well aware that tourists who come to our country are not only paying to see attractions, but also for the service that goes with it whether in the hospitality sector, car rental, or tour guiding. Service is thus the key in making Namibia stand out among the crowd tourism destination. We are therefore encouraged, we are therefore encouraging tourists from the United States of America and other parts of the world to come to Namibia, and also as investors who are interested to invest in the Namibia tourism sector. Mr. Chair, I would like to thank you sincerely for giving us this opportunity. Uh, you have listened a lot about Zimbabwe and Zambia. So I had the opportunity to say something about a very beautiful country. As they say, if you are out of the news, it means that country is safe for everybody to travel. Thank you very much once more, thank Program Director. Thank you so much. Okay. so much all right so okay you have to go okay all right so again uh, we thank the minister for um, sparing the time for us he has to leave as I said and uh, 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 minister you said such great things about Namibia I'm waiting to get my invitation there okay I'm coming all right I want to see all the, the your beautiful country so thank you so much for coming okay thank you all right <laughs> okay okay
So I have on the list here the Tanzania Tourism Board and Tanzania National Parks, Mr. Aloisi Inzuki, Managing Director, Tanzania Tourist Board. Are you here? All right, please come up. And I have here two minutes remarks, focus on partnership with AT. Should I bring my stopwatch out? And you're going to announce the recipients of the 2012 Tanzania Tourism Board Awards. I think we have some slideshows, but no remarks, I'm told. Please, you've got your two minutes. Thank you, thank you, doctor. Two minutes is very unfair. <laughs> <laughs> For a, for a country like Tanzania. <laughs> Honorable Minister Engineer Mzembi, Honorable Ministers here present, uh, Excellency Ambassadors, Honorable members, members of Parliament here present, ATA Board of Directors, uh, friends, colleagues, comrades, ladies and gentlemen, protocols respectfully observed. Uh, Tanzania is proud to be a sponsor of the Africa Travel Association's seventh annual presidential forum on tourism for the fourth consecutive year. Tanzania has played an active role in ATA since we hosted our first ATA Congress back in 1998, followed by a second one in 2008. Both of them were held in Arusha a city that is on the foot of Mount Meru and just a stone throw from the legendary Mount Kilimanjaro, the roof of Africa. Um, we also hosted the Ecotourism and Cultural Symposium in Zanzibar, the Spice Island and the cultural, the melting pot of cultures. Uh, that was in 2003 in Zanzibar. Tanzania has also led the organization as a president for three terms. We have continued to be active in ATA because we believe that ATA has played an important role in accelerating growth of tourism, especially uh, in, in increasing tourism, tourist flows from the United States by providing us with diverse opportunities uh, to promote our destination. For this reason, we are here as a sponsor to show our continued support of ATA's ever-expanding global reach in promoting tourism to the continent of Africa. This year, the Tanzania Tourist Board, uh, Board's Awards Program, which recognizes the contribution and support of the private sector in the growth of tourism, marks its 12th anniversary. The awards were launched at the ATA Congress in 2000, and in keeping with the tradition of announcing the awards at an ATA event, we would like to take this opportunity to present two of our 2012 Tourism Award uh, recipients. The first award, uh, to the Tanzania Tourist Board's two operator product uh, development category goes to the Africa Adventure Company, represented here by Michaeline Fesler. I'm going, I'm going to um, ask, yes, we move over to the, uh, in front of the poster or the, the pull-up banner, and in the interest of time, I want to announce the second uh, recipient uh, for the Tanzania Tourist Board Television Broadcast, which goes to the Global Football, together with CBS Sports Network, represented here by Michael Preston, the media director, Global Football, for airing a documentary on the first ever American football game played in Africa, the killy ball of CBS Sports. In the interest of time, I will uh, conclude my remarks by thanking you all 
and uh, best wishes for another successful ATA presidential forum. And we welcome you all to experience Tanzania, the land of Kilimanjaro, Zanzibar, and the Serengeti. Since uh, we are honored to uh, have the presence of my two superiors, Ambassador Sefue and Ambassador Majar, uh, may I kindly ask you to join us in a photo. I think this will be a photo of a lifetime. I thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so uh, while the uh, photo op is going, the program continues. I would like to invite. I know. All right, I'll change the topic a little bit here. Uh, we have here um, his, the Honorable Cyril Ogwin, the uh, Ambassador to the United States from Benin, please. Uh, please give him a round of applause. Thank you and uh, welcome to NYU, welcome to the ATA event here. And I think I'm supposed to next uh, invite Mr. Greg Truman, who's the Vice President, Sales and Marketing, South African Airways. He's going to give two minutes of remarks focusing on the partnership with ATA. And right after that, he's going to give me some free tickets to Africa. Right, Greg? Thank you. Dr. Yao, is only as many as you can carry. Okay. okay. <laughs> Good morning, uh, honorable ambassadors, honorable ministers, um, government leaders, private sector titans, friends, countrymen, relatives. I feel like I'm in church or mosque or a temple because we're all saying really good things to our congregation, to our followers. Um, let me just further just state as a half a step back, all protocol observed, I'm American, protocol is just not one of my strong suits. Um, also, I've never seen my name so big before, so if somebody can take a picture of that so I can send it to my family, I'd really like that. <laughs> I'm really honored to be here today. I mean, South African Airways, yes, we're the national airline of South Africa, but more than that, we are expanding throughout the continent. And I really like Dr. Yao's comments about, imagine if Africa was one country. Because if Africa was indeed one country, we could fly from Abidjan to Accra. No problem. We could fly from point A, no problem. But because we have these things called borders and, and uh, all sorts of negotiations between great countries, just not that easy. So if I could impart in, in, in to the ministers and the ambassadors that are here to help bring down some of those borders, to bring down some of those partitions to allow people, particularly from North America, because it's really, really hard to drive there from here. Um, to bring down some of those partitions that separate the ability to travel within Africa, that would be fantastic. Um, as a previous award winner from the Tanzania Tourist Board, I want to say thank you to them and thank you to their winners this year. Let's give them a round of applause, please. <laughs> South African Airways has been a longtime supporter of the Africa Travel Association because we believe it's critically important not just to talk amongst ourselves and our friends and our, our families, so to speak, but to communicate to a broader audience. Today, we've heard lots of great ideas. We've heard some, some great things to do, people to meet, sights to see, experience to be had in 54 different countries, but a few that were mentioned here today. I urge everyone to do that, but I think there's a bigger challenge involved, and I think that relates back to the governments and back to the ministers and to put a gauntlet down and a challenge to them. 
We can all stand here today and talk about what we need to do and all the beauties that our countries and our destinations have to offer, but until we're truly able to coalesce, perhaps through the Africa Travel Association, perhaps through private sector partnerships with airlines and other hotels, to go out there and promote, promote, promote. Um, I saw an old colleague here today I hadn't seen in a while, and it reminded me I used to work for a man who said, if a little bit of marketing is good, then a lot of marketing is better, then overkill is best. And as a, as, a, as a continent, Africa truly doesn't do that. There's a couple of destinations and a couple of resorts and properties that get it, and they're out there promoting. And you know what? They're quietly reaping the benefits. Everybody else needs to get on that bandwagon. Everybody needs to get on that train to make things happen. Um, I'm very honored again to be here today with the New, Afri New York University Africa House with Zambia and Zimbabwe. Having just returned from Zimbabwe, I had the most amazing time during the ATA World Congress. There's no question in my mind that Zimbabwe and Zambia working together will stage an incredible UNWTO General Assembly session. So if you have that opportunity, I urge you to go there. I, I mentioned before, we're a previous winner. We work very closely with Tanzania and, the tra and the, their tourist board people, and they do a terrific job. And again, we just need to get the word out together. My one little plug, I won't talk too much about the great service, but if, if the government, if this private sector, let me introduce one of my colleagues who's based in the New York. Her name is Cheryl LaPoche. Cheryl, can you stand up for a quick second? I, I guarantee you, Cheryl knows every single travel agent and tour operator within 150 miles of this room that sells Africa. She needs help. And the offer is out there for any of your tourist boards, any of your ministries, to work with us to help promote your destinations and our flights. Win, win, win for everybody. My little plug is that every day from New York City, we have daily nonstop flights to Johannesburg. And what's especially great about that, they make seamless morning connections tomorrow to Zambia, Zimbabwe, Tanzania, and a host of other African countries. I urge you all, if you haven't been to the continent or you haven't been back in a while, you need to come back, you need to visit, you need to bring about 150 people with you every time you come. And please try to have them fly on an African airline, South African Airways, Arik Air out of Nigeria is also one of the great partners of the ATA. Because when travelers are traveling to Africa, let's give them an African experience that's amazing from the moment they board, from the moment they make that decision. So again, I thank you very much, Eddie. Thank you for all your hard work. I look forward to working with everybody here to going out and promoting the continent. Thank you. Very good. No tickets. Was that two minutes? Yeah, that was good. I went over two great. minutes. I can't. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Uh, Greg has been a great supporter of uh, ATA for many years now, and uh, we appreciate all you do. OK, um, we're moving right along. So. Uh, Ambassador Ogwin, would you please come up and join us here? Uh, your president was supposed to be with us, I understand, and he couldn't make it. So uh, in his stead, please uh, just uh, take a seat there. I think there's one at the end there, right? Okay, so we're moving into uh, the other phase of our conversation.